Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com. You can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And I wanted to pick up from where I left off on my last tutorial about doing Hibernate transaction management with the JPA Entity Manager, where I just persisted a POJO to the database and actually go through the whole CRUD process of not just persisting, which is create, but retrieve, update, and delete records from a database using JPA with the Hibernate framework underneath. Now in the previous example, I created this player class, annotated it with the entity annotation, had a primary key taught called ID of type long and put the requisite ID and generated value tags in there and put the requisite setters and getters in and then added a main method. And you can see in the main method here, where I do all the stuff that's required in order to get the entity manager, create a transaction, persist an object, and then finally commit a transaction. Notice the password is ABC123 there, and um, that record actually got saved to the database in the last example. Um, now, I wanna actually move this code out of this main method and move it into a separate class. So I've got everything in the main method of this player class. I don't like that. I want to kind of keep that clean. I think I'll leave that main method in there for posterity stake. But I have created a new file called JPA CRUD example dot Java in the same package as the other player class and any other classes I've created to date. And I put four methods in create, retrieve, update and delete record. You can see that maps to CRUD C R U and D. And I've made calls to those static methods inside of the, the main method here so that I can go forward and, and test them out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start off just by pasting the code that we had in that previous example. I'm going to get rid of the, the try and catch here because I don't think I really need Don't think I really need to try and catch for this example. I just want to keep it simple. Although if you're doing transaction management, you want to worry about exceptions and do rollbacks. But I want to concentrate on CRUD here. And as you can see, I get the entity manager factory based on the persistence unit that maps to the persistence.xml files persistence unit right there. So JPA tutorial, JPA tutorial. I should also mention that I previously set this up to create and drop the database every time the entity manager was created. I have removed that um, because I'm actually going to create and uh, delete the entity manager in each of these methods. I know I should be caching it in a singleton, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, I want to keep these simple and just really kind of work and concentrate on first principles. And so in this example, you can see, well, um, I create a new player instance, we persist it to the database and we commit the transaction. I'm gonna change this up a little bit. So um, set password to ABC123 and I can, can make that my password, I guess, and set the name to Julie and change the test field to tester, I don't know. And, uh, but we've certainly got a new name named Julian here. I'm gonna try and run this application, which means first compiling it. I'm doing everything from the command line just to prove to people that, you know, you don't have to use an IDE and you can do all of these things from best practices. Uh, it does make it a lot harder. <laughs> um, so use an IDE, but uh, you know, shows you can just use Hibernate with a JDK. And as you can see, uh, I compile the code using this. I've got all of my Hibernate libraries right there in this hiblib folder. Um, I referenced the, I got JDK on the uh, Java home configured and the JDK on the, the Windows path. So I can call the Java utility and then I can just run the code. And when I run the code, if I go back to the database, do a little search on that player table, you notice that Julie was added in there. So. You know, we've got the create working, but you know, we knew we had the create working. Uh, we knew that from the, the previous example. So I want to concentrate on these other methods, retrieve, update, and delete. Now, a lot of the code's going to be the same. As I said, I'm going to set up and tear down the entity manager each time in each of these methods. You can cache it in a persistence manager class or something like that, or better yet inject the entity manager in using spring and context and dependency injections but that's going to keep things really really simple right now 
Now, if I actually look at the database, I'll, you'll notice that the ID of Julie is two. If you want to retrieve a record, all you need is the ID of the record. And so I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to create a key uh, based on that number two. I am then going to create a player object. by finding that player in the database based on key. Hopefully a player object will come back and everything will be held in that player object named P. And to really prove that everything is working, I should be able to call the p.getName method. The field was name, right? I start to lose track of these things, but there you go. I'm gonna compile this. Hopefully everything compiles and it does. I'm going to run this example. Um, everything runs. And of course, one thing I didn't do was I didn't call this method. I'm still calling that crud method. So there we go. We've got that retrieve method now. Let me just compile again. And there we go. We've done the search and it's come back and it said, hey, that name based on the ID of two is Julie. Okay, well, that's retrieve. What about update? How could we update a record? Well, you know, an update is really similar to retrieve because in order to update a record, you have to first retrieve it from the database. So we'll retrieve Julie. I think I ran the create method twice. So if I actually do another search on this database, you see I've got two Julies. So maybe we'll update that third Julie and make her a Karen. I don't know if she'll like that, but There we go, our third Julie has been turned into a Karen. Now, as far as update goes, people think, oh, you know, don't you have to call the persist method or don't you have to, you know, change the field and then after changing the field, call a saver update. That's from the old Hibernate days. No, you don't. Um, as long as that player object is under the spell of the entity manager, and so the entity manager starts a transaction here, you could say that that player object has touched the entity manager by being pulled out of the database by it. Um, as long as this transaction is active, any updates that you make to that object will get persisted to the database. And if you don't believe me, I'll prove it to you by first compiling this code and then by running it and then going to the MySQL workbench and you notice that ID number two in the database is Julie, but if I do a refresh, there we go, it is Karen. Okay, so that's update. Now, what if we actually wanted to do a delete of the Karen? Well, again, we would need to pull the entity from the database. So, you know, we're gonna need all of this entity stuff. So we now got that player from the database. And let me see. Yeah, okay, so that is the delete record so that we're going to actually call that delete record. And now once that happens, all we have to do is ask the entity manager to remove it. And it's not just gonna remove it from its grip, grip from its grips, making it a transient object. It's actually going to delete it from the database. So there we go, um, remove that record, and any manager get transaction commit. That all looks good to me. So again, it's the same thing that we did in the update and even in the, the retrieve method. We get the object, we hold it as a player, then we ask the entity manager to remove it, and that's what's new and exciting here. We'll do a compile. We will run the code. Delete player from the database where the ID is equal to the ID of two. And let's see if our magic worked. Select rows. And there we go. No more Karen in our database. And there you go. That's how you do your basic CRUD operations with JPA and Hibernate. Now with the query, you can get crazy. I'm gonna do some 
criteria queries. I'm going to do some named queries. So a querying uh, with the and also use the Hibernate query language. So there's a lot of things you can do with queries beyond just the simple, hey, I want to find something based on the ID. But if you want to get a feel for the basic CRUD operations, create, retrieve, update, and delete, that's a great example for you. And if you want to learn more, you can find more of that code over on my GitHub account, and you'll find lots more tutorials over on the server side.